Hi, my name is Margaret Feinberg, and if I had one message to give church leaders, it would simply be two words. Thank you. Thank you for your faithful service. Thank you for loving the unlovable. Thank you for caring about those who no one else notices or cares for. Thank you for making so many sacrifices personally, relationally, financially, in thousands of little ways that no one will probably ever notice or thank you for. Thank you for responding to the whispers, the echoes, and the shouts of God in your life. Thank you. And on those mornings that you quietly wonder, does any of it make a difference? Know that you are not alone. I ask myself that question regularly. And sometimes in the silence that follows, I am gently reminded that what we do here will live beyond into eternity. So keep going, because I, for one, am rooting for you. Over the course of the last year, I've been on a spiritual adventure of sorts. I've spent time with a shepherdess in Oregon, a farmer in Nebraska, a beekeeper in Colorado, and a vintner in Napa Valley. With each of these individuals, I opened up the scripture and asked, how do you read these portions of scripture, not as a theologian, but in light of what you do every day? In other words, how does a shepherd read John 10 and Jesus' description of the Good Shepherd? What do the spiritual principles of reaping and sowing mean to a man whose livelihood is dependent on the land's annual harvest? How does a beekeeper interpret a land that is described as overflowing with milk and honey? And how does a vintner interpret Jesus' command to abide in the vine? This adventure is the basis of my new book, Scouting the Divine, my search for God in wine, wool, and wild honey. My time in fields and among flocks changed the way that I read the Bible, adding depth and meaning I had never seen before. Along the way, I discovered something I think is particularly important for church leaders today, and it came during my time of researching vines in Scripture. While Scouting the Divine focuses on my time with a vintner in Napa Valley, I also spent time with one in Fresno, California, and their techniques and purposes of growing grapes couldn't be more different. You see, the grape grower in Fresno cultivated thousands of acres of grapes. He grew grapes to make raisins that he sold to Sunmaid. He grew grapes for grape juice like Welch's, and he grew grapes for large-scale wineries like Gallo. The vines themselves were thick and they were sturdy, and they had these huge, vibrant canopies of large green leaves. Underneath were these bundles of grapes, and they were literally of biblical proportions, often weighing 10 pounds or more. Huge machinery and irrigation systems were used to prune the vines, as well as to water and fertilize the soil. Now, at the base of each of these vines, cuts had been made in a process called girdling. In Fresno, the goal is maximum production of every vine. So each year, a worker will go out with a knife and cut a ring around the bottom of the vine. It tricks the vine into thinking that it's going to die, so it overproduces, yielding a bountiful harvest. Now, my experience in Napa Valley was much different than my time in Fresno. In Napa, the vintner I spent time with only worked with boutique vineyards. Rather than being responsible for 10,000 acres, he was caring for a mere half to three quarters of an acre per vineyard. He didn't girdle the vines. He wasn't interested in maximum productivity. He was interested in the character and the flavor of every grape. In his vineyard, he touched each cluster of grapes two to three times during the growing season, carefully pruning each vine by hand to ensure that every bunch of grapes received just the right amount of sunlight. Though he carefully kept an eye on the soil, he intentionally didn't remove every rock or hardship of a vine. He left them because he wanted to grow rich, flavorful grapes with distinct flavors and characters. Both men are passionate about growing grapes. Both are great at what they do, and both should be celebrated. Yet their focus and their techniques couldn't be more different. Why do I share this experience with you? Because like viticulture, caring for God's people is truly a labor of love. 
And I don't know what type of vineyard God has planted you in and called you to cultivate. I don't know whether he's placed you in an area like Fresno where you will care for thousands and thousands of acres and the fruitfulness will be overwhelming at times. Or whether he's called you to a place like Napa. Your acreage may be limited, but the depth and character and richness of your service and love are unmistakable. Wherever God has planted you, my prayer is that you thrive. May you bring in the harvest that God has called you to, remembering that whatever works in Fresno won't always work in Napa, and whatever works in Napa won't always work in Fresno, and that's okay. If you stay true to where God has called you and continue to trust the master vintner, he will yield a harvest through you. And I look forward to the day when we will celebrate together at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I would love to hear from you. You can reach me at margaret at margaretfeinberg.com, Twitter me at Ma Feinberg, or learn more about the adventure that is Scouting the Divine at www.margaretfeinberg.com. God go with you.